How are you today? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? All right. It's uh, you know, it's always it's always a slow ramp up to the new year. You're just like, I gotta do this all over again. But I just did this last year. Right, right. Well, hang in there. Hang exactly. in there. The hang alternative in. the alternative sucks. So, you know. Exactly. exactly. How about that? Exactly. Um, which um I I saw the film in Toronto and I, I loved it. Um, and it hit me in a very specific way because obviously it's you know, it's a it's a conversation starter. And then five minutes later to be talking to Ava is kind of strange. You're like, oh, I'm having the conversation with you. But the mm -hmm. thing that I that really struck me is the way you guys deal with loss and mourning and grief. That's mm -hmm. not necessarily the main part of the film, but it's mm -hmm. a specific way. And I I had lost my mother last year, and I just I noticed looks that you gave in the mm -hmm. film that mm -hmm. aren't you know it's not a line of dialogue. It may not be in the script, but it's just a it's a way of looking that I was like I feel seen, and I mm -hmm. and it's just. Mm -hmm. It's such a specific thing that I, I almost feel like you don't know you do it until it happens and you go, oh, I I'm channeling that in a way. And, and I think it really makes a difference in the film because it, it really puts you into her shoes in a way that I think without it, you know, the film's not academic necessarily, but it would feel more like a conversation as opposed to the emotions. And I think it really hammers home the emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I. I yeah, I, I I know people say this was like I thank you for that, but <laughs> no, right. I do. I, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. I I actually do that. Thank you for thank you for that. It's interesting that you said there's a look. Yeah, there's a look. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I I think that you know I'm hearing that more and more as we're talking yeah. about the film how people are connecting because it 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 is it does allow us to sit in grief yeah and um we're all sort of you know have will arrive there at that place whether we want to or not no matter what we do yeah you know we're always all of all of us are going to you know end up on the mourners bench at some point and i think people are as you said, a lot of people are feeling seen. You know, I feel like we in this in this in American culture, because everything is so much about youth and time and future, 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 that everything feels like this like runaway train and and there's no time for to acknowledge loss. Yeah. And and when you lose someone, there's this sort of statute of limitations you know, of when it, it, when you are, um, it's, it's, it's actually a legitimate thing to feel, Yeah. you know? Oh, yes. And what'd you say? I said, oh, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. a certain limitations. Aren't you over yeah. it by now? Aren't no. you over it by now? Do you know what I mean? It's been no. a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, and, and I had to, I've been reading a lot of stuff, you know, and listening to, there's a, there's a, um, a writer's name is Hanif Adur Do you do you know him? Name's familiar. Yeah. yeah, he's this brilliant, brilliant guy. He has his podcast, and I just and he's a writer. Um, just a smart guy. Yeah, and he talks about making space for grief and living with it, living with it. And I I think I stumbled upon something the other night. Sometimes I say things that make sense, but I was I said I live with grief like it's a friend, yeah. you know. Uh, it's essentially, you know, what Billie Holiday, good morning, heartbreak, sit down, just acknowledging that this, there is this presence that is ever present in my life. And I guess the question for us mourners, mm -hmm. us grievers is how we handle it. But to ever say that you'll get over it, that's, that's false. Yeah. That's not, oh, it never happens. It's it's no different than in, in the film with like, you can tell there are people who want to be like, well, well, aren't we past this? Aren't we, you know, aren't these issues yes. solved? And and yes. I think the thing that, that the film does so well is it it doesn't discount that, but it does like take the time to be like, well, why do you think that? Because that's the thing, like your character really has, besides obviously the, the grief look, but the two things she does is she talks about the issue and she thinks about the issue. And it's such a unique thing and that you're asked to, while doing a lot, also spend a lot of time in thought about something you will write later. It's mm -hmm. kind of a, a unique acting uh, task. It's, well, we have to watch you formulate a book. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. figure that out. You're like, oh, yeah, right. That would be great. Sure. Right. Yeah. It is. It, it, it's, it's another kind of character work. Yeah. You know, that I'm, that, that I embraced as character work. Yeah. And it was sometimes very frustrating because I couldn't lean on things that I usually lean on to do, to do roles, you know, to do, to, to do my work. You know, I look for things. I look for an, I look for an accent. I look for place. I look for body, um, choreography, the thing, the way we choreograph our bodies throughout the day. I look for all of those things. And I really couldn't do that with her. You know, I had to watch her interviews. I watched a talk that she did, this famous TED talk that she did when Warmth of Other Sons came out and I saw how nervous she was. So I had to look for those things, but they're very, very subtle. You know, they're subtle, but they are, they are incredibly informative and, you know, formative in terms of like the, the character work that I did. Yeah. I mean, how do you dramatize thinking? Yeah, the wheels yes. turning. Yes, yes, yeah. And I, I, I when when my one of my first conversations with Ava, we talked about the possibility of portraying the interior life of someone. Yeah, and you you see that often in you know other kinds of films, probably maybe foreign films a lot. Yeah. you know French films <laughs> to be yeah. specific. You know. Um, a cigarette and think about things for nine yes, hours. Yes, 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 yes. And they're like, them. yeah, this this is a story right here, <laughs> boldly. But yeah. we don't, we don't, we ne we don't necessarily give that space to uh, our what we do. No. And I was, I thought that was really exciting. That was exciting to me it, to try to make work. Oh yeah. Occasionally, you just yell at her and go, "Couldn't you have just adapted the book? That would have been easier for everyone." But no, it's it's true that you're watching it. And and you're watching someone formulate a thesis, and mm -hmm. and that's such a unique thing. It's like we were joking about the the French film. Oh, nothing's happening here. No, everything's happening. Like in a way, everything is happening to her, and and you know she's having these conversations, and there's never an answer. Is the thing every 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 time there's a sort of centerpiece debate, you know, I, you could almost at TIFF you can kind of see people like lean forward in their seat, like oh we're gonna we're gonna solve this problem now. It's like no. But we're gonna address it, and we're gonna find out. Well, why does this person feel the way they feel? And 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 while nothing is solved, you do leave those debates kind of feeling like the other person also is thinking. Whether it's yeah. you know the, the dinner table conversation, or even uh, Nick Offerman in the in the basement, you you kind of leave like these people are gonna think about what she said like after she leaves, and that's kind of the impact she's leaving throughout the film. It's like the snail trail of like well, maybe there's another way, and. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of the audience goal also. It's it's such a sort of sly way of making a film that I'm sure you guys are aware of while making it, but you never kind of know if it works until it comes out. Yeah, and I, I think that, I think that, I think Ava would hear that and go, oh, good. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, cool. I don't, I don't think that that we necessarily set out with that intention. And I, I wasn't aware of that as I, as I'm doing it, I just, the great thing about Ava as so many great things about her as a director is that so much of what you see of me is me experience doing it in real yeah. time. You know, I'm not recreating something. When you see me walking across that intersection in India, you're seeing Anjanu is walking across yeah. that intersection where traffic is coming in so many different directions at the same time. And I'm scared out of my mind. And there was just a camera there catching it. I'm having these conversations in India with, you know, real Dalit people, you yeah. know, and I'm hearing what they're telling me in real time and responding to what they say because they're so they're so brilliant. I'm getting this new information while I'm being filmed. Yeah, because how could you not take that in? Yes. How is that not more interesting than planning it out? And and even to the the walking across the street, I've been to India. It is terrifying. I've been in a car in India. They don't break. They just honk. It's no. So, it is. I was scared out of my mind, but like when I tell you, exhilarated, yeah. exhilarated. Ava would come up to me. Are you okay? I'm like, I am fine, homie. Like, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I'm doing this. You know? Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, that's that's the fun of it's happening in the moment because no matter what you're making, you have to trust your filmmaker that like the good yeah. will be in it. That the you know will make the right turn, not the left turn, whatever the the case may be. But when you're doing it in 
sort of in the moment, you're like, well, this can be kind of anything and we're going to see what happens. Yes. And I already trust you. Like, all right, let's go crazy. Like, yeah. let's go, let's go down that alleyway. Whatever's down there will yes. be fun. Yes. All right. and, and I'm sure there's stuff that it, nothing comes of it, but you go like, well, that was a life experience. Like Ava and I just got to go like on an adventure. And also there's a movie coming. So like, it's kind of, that's the magic of something like this when it kind of, by nature of the story, it can almost be anything. Why not yeah. embrace that? Like if you came with a real narrow focus, like we have to hit this, this, and that, I think it would lose something. The fact that it kind of is thinking on its own in a way mm -hmm. is really unique and makes it such a, such a movie that lingers. I think. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you completely. Like we were in Germany. Sometimes we were shooting. We did not have permission to shoot, yeah. you know, and we were just getting things on the slot. I love that type shit. It's like guerrilla filmmaking, you know. It it is guerrilla filmmaking. Um, and I I loved I love that. I love that. And I you know I I'm not a. It's a lot of stuff that I'm not good at. And I decided when I did this film, I said, I'm going to, I'm just going to stand up to all those things that I'm not good at, you know, my fears, everything, because I knew I had to do it in order to make, make sure that Ava DuVernay didn't regret film at yeah. casting in this. I knew I had to do it in order to, I believe so much in Ms. Wilkerson, so much in what she wrote, that I had to do that in order to honor her as best I could. And, you know, you said something a couple minutes ago about, about like, about the film being something that ignites conversation and there are no answers. And there's this cat, his name is scholar. His name is Teju Cole. He's just a brilliant guy. I don't know if you know who he yeah. is, yeah. but um, he, um, he was talking about this. He was talking about this poet, Ann Carson. And he said that he felt from this poem that naming the naming of a contradiction is the beginning of an ethos. Now, it's a very, that's a very heady idea. Yeah. But what I got from it is that I was like, that is what the experience of origin is, that we're naming the contradictions. Yeah. And by naming it, not having the answers, but naming it, calling it out, saying what it is then we are on the path to something better. We are on the path to an ethos, uh, a, a, a way of thinking that is better, you know? It's it's also, it's life, you know? I, I don't have the answer for why this makes you sad, why this makes you angry, but if you can acknowledge the fact that yes. I'm sad or I'm angry, or I know why, but I don't necessarily have an answer, but yeah. you've acknowledged that you're, you're, you're on the right path. I think that's true. It's, it's having no path. Well, yeah. and I, the film falls into that too. Like if the film doesn't know what it wants to say, it says nothing. But if you're saying something, you don't have to have the answer. But if you're starting a conversation, you may you may just spark something in someone's head who will one day have the answer. And like, how great is that? Like someone will eventually have an answer to something and it didn't didn't magically appear. But I think that's that's sort of the magic of a movie. You know, what it can inspire people. Every filmmaker had a movie they watched when they went that that's the thing I want every actor like yeah I want to do that for the rest of my life and it wasn't necessarily that they knew that moment was going to be it and that movie didn't know it was going to be it or that performance but it just it clicks it starts a conversation that goes on the rest of someone's life yes exactly, exactly. And I think uh, as we wrap up I think the film will will sort of do that because it is kind of unfortunately timeless but like in a world where there are answers it's such an amazing time capsule of when we were figuring it out in a way. Where like when, when one person was like, well, why aren't we actually talking about this? And mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out maybe how we can talk about this. And 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 the movie kind of leaves on. It's almost like, it almost like is a college class where it ends on, okay, discuss. Like Ava like yes. this class. No, discuss, yes. like figure it out. Papers yes. do on. Yes, exactly. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing that that's what it's doing in a world where that's not really what we make anymore. And mm -hmm. I love that you're in it. And I love that you're in it. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for doing this. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day, okay? You too. Take care. Bye. Okay, awesome. bye. Bye.